YouTube, this is Omid and here bringing you a trailer analysis video for the recently released Black Ops 2 DLC 1 Revolution. In this video I'm only going to be talking exclusively about the zombie part of it because that's the only part I really care about. If you want to see the rest of it, um, you know, just go ahead and uh, make sure in the comments and if you comment that you want, you want to see it, I'll put it in. But anyway, you don't want to hear about that for now, hopefully. So let's go straight into the Die Rise part. So, first of all, we got clip one here. Um, doesn't really tell us much about the map. Um, it confirms that the original characters of, you know, Marlton, Misty, all those kind of people are going to remain in this DLC, as I predicted. Um, although it does answer, you know, ask the question, how did they get to China from LA when the world's exploded? But, you know, who knows? Also shows that the M16A1 assault rifle is returning as a gun, most likely off the wall. Um, and not on the box. So then we move on to clip two. Um, shows that the map's been set in a skyscraper and it, and shows the vertical gameplay that the developers will be talking about in the next part of the video. Um, this map will have different height levels. Um, f from part of it, you know, there'll be different floors. Does that would does mean will the um, PHC flopper return? Because of course, it was introduced in Ascension, a map that had quite a few different height levels. And that was one of the whole points of it, where you flopped, you didn't take fall damage, and you created a nice little explosion. Will it be returning? Seems like a good good map if any to make it return. Also, we can see here that the player has over 97,000 points, and it's only on round one, which indicates that the bank will be returning from transit, which is a welcome piece of news. And also it shows that there's a very easy way to kill yourself in this die from fall falling, of course, uh, uh, not ascension. Um, Transit had this in terms of the ravine that you could fall down and instantly die. Will it be such a permanent death this time if it's that easy? If it is, it could um, make people be a bit reluctant to play the map, but it looks like a pretty interesting feature and hope will hopefully keep us all on our toes when we're playing it. Okay, clip three gets shows the general background of the map. So sort of comets or asteroids falling around the map. Uh, this to me shows that it takes place a few months after transit, um, and the sort of asteroid belt that's been orbiting Earth that you see in the menus is that is that to blame for all these asteroids falling? You know, is it a new type of special zombie? Maybe is that how it arrives? You know, a, a new round asteroids fall all around and hit the skyscraper, and zombies arrive. You know, is it is it merge the monkeys from Ascension where they came down on the lunar landers? You know, could be, or it could just be a cool background feature and um, clip four nothing really new gets some general stuff doesn't really show anything that previous clips haven't shown before clip five and um, it confirms the yeah, one nine eleven and the remington shotgun return as weapons most likely again starting pistol and off the wall weapon on the left here and um, we can see a barricade so it confirms that unlike in nuketown zombies um die rise will definitely have windows that zombies break through and come in. Will this be the only way that zombies can actually enter the playable area? I know that would be quite welcome. You know, give Carpenter use. Um, also in this bit, we can see that there's a Chinese calendar on the wall. Now, does that mean that if you look at it, we could get a set date for these events? Because, as you know, it's all up in the air when the events of Moon and Transit take place. But does this calendar give us a timeline? You know, when is it? Is it in 2025? Is it in the 1960s? Is it in BC 5000? It's this calendar will hopefully shed some light. And um, the resolution here is obviously too low. I couldn't make out any symbols, and even if they were, they were probably all in Cantonese. Um, but you know, hopefully in the map we can see it and get an exact date for these events, which would be quite nice. Um. So after that, we can see that we're now in a factory environment, lots of sewers and that kind of stuff. And, you know, this kind of environment doesn't seem a likely, you know, it doesn't seem to be the kind of thing that you'd find in a tower in China. Does that mean that at the base of the tower, there's a sort of sewing factory that we could get, get to? Or is it just someone's like house that they have a sew mill in? I don't know. It definitely looks like the kind of place that you'd be, you know would be at ground level rather than up in a um, skyscraper, but I guess we'll find out. Um, clip 6, so over on the right we can see the power switch. Um, it doesn't need to be glitched because the hand holding it 
doesn't seem to be on in the right place, does that mean that we're going to see the buildable power switch from transit? Or is it just a glitch that Treyarch didn't notice when they were making the map and hopefully patched once they see this video? Yep. Uh, good chance of that. Um, also, as we, we can see from the panning shots, that there's a lot of different buildings that have crashed together and it looks like you know there'll be a bit playable areas and bits and pieces. Does that mean that there'll be multiple power switches? So one power switch powers one building, one power switch powers another? Or will one power switch um, power all of the buildings? Seems the most likely, even if it doesn't make sense. And then, as you can see, next to the power switch, there's a sort of fan there. Is that a little um, joke reference to the turbine from Transit that also provided a source of power? Could well be. Okay, clip 7, we can see an unobstructed left shaft being designed. Obviously, this is just on a computer, which means it might not have been finished yet. But does that indicate that um, you can use a lift um, to get between the floors. You know, we can see that kind of utility returning from five. Because, what you know, apart from the lift that they seem to be showing us here, there doesn't seem to be any obvious way to get back up. The You know, the gaps between the fragments that you can see, it, you know, it's good enough for getting down. But I don't see you could realistically jump back up. Although certainly not if there's zombies in the middle of a round. Um, doesn't seem likely. So I'd probably say that the left shaft's the utility to get back up the buildings and maybe down for, you know, a speedy down without risking falling to your death. But then there's always the risk of, um, maybe, you know, there's a risk of zombies managing to get into the left. Maybe there's um, a cost involved, like there wasn't five, but maybe a bit more expensive because now there's alternate methods. Who knows? Clip eight, again, doesn't really show us anything new. Um, but clip nine. Um, now the thing is, in both these rooms, you can actually tell if you look closely, they're upside down. Um, the first one you can tell by the Buddhas, they're fixed and they're facing, you know, upside down. So the room's upside down, even if it looks the right way up. And the second room is also upside down. You can tell by the staircase. In this one, however, the Buddhas the right way up because it seems to have fallen that way. It's very odd. Um, I can see what they mean about the confusing nature of the maps. Clip 10, um, just some generic gameplay, but you can see that um, Misty is firing a pack-a-punched version of the M16 rifle, which means that the pack a punch will be there in some form of the map. Not really a surprise, but you know, nice to see a confirmation. And clip 11, nothing new whatsoever. So let's get the audio reel from all the developers, developers talking about this. Other people might overlook this, but it's just as important for finding out new stuff. So the first reel which is this. It's going to be a surprise around every corner. Um, is probably just a reference to the close quarters nature of die rise trouble around every corner. Guess shows that in the um, close quarter zones, you might want to, you know, you, it's going to be tricky and zombies can easily get the jump on you. Uh, so then the second reel. Die rise takes place in the far east in a series of crumbling skyscrapers. And what's cool about it is that for the first time we're introducing the element of verticality. So this guess that sets the scene for Die Rise, guess the environment it's in, it's China, and also showing this new um, ver verticality aspect um, of many floors. It's not actually new technically, I mean we've had multiple f floors ever since, well I guess Shinonima had it. Um, you know, ever since Nactar and Dinton, as zombie maps have se had several different floors, so it's not actually that new a feature at all, but it hasn't been taken to this degree before, as far as I know. Well, maybe Ascension, but yeah, not to this degree. So then um, here's the fourth reel. We're combining open areas of gameplay as well as very narrow and dark corridors. And it's very much like a maze. You not only will get lost, but also there are so many dangerous places like, uh, you know, elevator shafts that are open. If you don't pay attention, just fall into the chasm. So this is just talking about the sort of natural hazards, the fall into your death. And this is, seems to be a more sort of extreme version of the lava on transit. You know, people complained, oh, lava transit. You know, we don't like it. So they decided rather than just hurting you, it instantly kills you. So lots of areas where you can just fall down and instantly die. Um, not sure how people will react to that, but, you know, it makes the map more challenging. And I know how people loved challenging maps in the past, like 5. Uh, so let's move on to the final reel about Die Rise. 
We've created this environment that is very surreal in nature. In certain parts, players may not be able to tell which side is up and which side is down. It's kind of like an MC Escher style puzzle. So this is just talking about the confusing nature of the maps there. The MC Escher style picture, he does lots of illusionist drawings, which I mentioned in my previous video. Um, and basically this side of the map is designed to confuse players, so they don't know where they are, they don't know, you know, what's the best way to go. You go into a room, you can't immediately tell, right, that's the exit. It might not be makes instinctive navigation difficult and um, makes it harder to learn the map makes it more confusing you know there might be a split second where you're just like which way do i go and that's the you know that might be all the zombies need to take you down um but yeah it definitely adds a very unique style to the map and i like the look of it a lot so now we'll move on to the uh the multi the new game mode for zombies turned and um, so here's the footage here the footage itself doesn't really tell us anything that the commentary didn't anyway because all the game footage is from transit, but keep in my opinion, but you know, there you go. So the game mode is basically, it's a sort of take on infection, but we've seen infection more for three and then Treyarch have decided that, that would be too predictable to put that in zombies. So how it works is there's one survivor who seems to be given an Olympia or well, that could vary between maps. And then the rest of the players in the game are basically zombies. And then whichever zombie kills the survivor, they um, are instantly killed and then respawn as the survivor. And then every kill the survivor gets, he earns points, which is a very nice style. I like it a lot. Very very clever. Should be quite fun. Um, Not sure if it's going too far away from the base version of zombies because... As far as I can tell, there's no AI zombies in this. It's all player-controlled zombies. Could be quite fun if for people recording cinematics and that kind of stuff because now they can control the zombies, so they can probably get things that you know that they couldn't do with tradi traditional zombies because they always just go free. Um, interesting to see how that happens. Um, but it looks like quite a fun ga game mode. It's a bit like sort of grief, where it's just like. For those who just want to have a bit of fun. Um, but yeah, it looks quite fun. Um, and then here's just all the audio from the developers at Treyarch talking about um, Turned. It doesn't really mention anything new or Easter egg. It's just basically explaining how it works. So here they are now. Turn is a brand new game mode to Zombies. This is the first time we've added a new game mode with our DLC. And it allows players to do something that they haven't wanted to do for a long time, which is play as the zombie. In this mode, you're going to run and wreck havoc, trying to take down the one lone human player. And if you're successful, you'll actually respawn as that lone human. And now it's on you to fend off the zombies. And you're going to get points for doing so. So that's it, um, pretty much. So yeah, this has been a sort of um, breakdown of all the things that I could see in the trailer. And yeah, so until next time, this has been All Agent. Thank you and goodbye. All of this is available on January 29th, first on Xbox 360. Get Revolution as a standalone map pack or as part of the season pass.